Hey everybody, welcome to the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. I'm your host, Dollar Will, and this is another episode of 1804 History. Yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody who tuned in to the last episode. Um, I appreciate you guys for your feedback, your comments, everything. But yeah, I wanted to get back into the history segments because that's my passion, that's my air, and the whole nine. And I just love teaching about great people, especially people who gave their lives to make sure that we have rights in this society today. And it just be a lot of people who don't know the history and don't know these great young people who sacrificed their lives for the generation of today. Even though most people don't care about this um, generation or the generation from before, but history has a way of repeating itself. But I just wanted to tell you guys the story of a young man who was savagely murdered in cold blood and didn't deserve that in the first place. His name was Jimmy Lee Jackson, was a deacon at his church, the youngest deacon of his church. And all he was doing was registering people to vote. And he was pretty much quiet, young, um, shy, and is, is from the people that knew him. And he wanted to be a part of the civil rights movement because of Dr. King was there in the city of Maryland, Alabama. It's outside of Selma. If y'all seen the movie Selma, um, Lakeith Stanfield played him in which I think he didn't look anything like Jimmy Lee Jackson, but you know, <laughs> they had to um, get an actor or whatever, but um, he was just pretty much, you know, doing what he felt was right. And he was taken and beaten and he was shot in his stomach twice by a state trooper named James Fowler. And James Fowler was in charge for the murder or the beating of Jimmy Lee Jackson and his family. And he went on 42 years without being tried or arrested for his murder. And it just, cause he was on arm. And the night of the murder, um, they fled from a demonstration and they took refuge at this black cafe. And Fowler and another trooper Found them in a cafe. They started beating them up. His grandfather, who was 82 years old, just beating them up. And his mother. So he went to their rescue and tried to disfuse the situation. And father grabbed him and shot him in the abdomen twice. He collapsed. Then he gets back up 
and he heads down the road to this church and then he um get rushed to the good samaritan center hospital in marion where he goes pretty much into emergency surgery and what they don't tell you in the movie selma is that he was planning on making a full recovery but two white doctors suggest that he gets another surgery and the black doctor he pretty much refused or he disagreed with it because he said that he was going to make a full recovery and this hospital has a history of not treating negroes at that time so he practically passes away or succumb to his injuries with gunshot wounds because he was overdosed on anesthesia. And also his bullet wounds didn't heal properly because they didn't close it up correctly. So eight days later, he succumbs to his injuries and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his eulogy at his funeral and said how he was well liked and how he was brave for the cause and everything. And what I don't like about this is, you know, we see this all the time. We see so many young black males being gunned down by law enforcement and they get away with it. They get away with killing us. They get away with being able to go home to their families and being able to live out the rest of their days. Live a long time too, to old age. And it wasn't until 42 years later, the year 2007, where he was arrested and charged with his murder. And that's a long time, you know what I'm saying? He was old enough to watch his children grow up. He was old enough to have grandchildren. And he was charged with his murder 42 years later. And the prosecutor of that case was a black man by the name of Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson ended up giving him a plea deal of six months to prison. <sighs> and he said that, oh, he's an old man. It, it, it don't make any sense to give an old man life in prison when he's close to death. I ain't gonna lie, by researching this, that really pissed me off to the point that um, I just shook my head because, like, his sister, who pretty much the last remaining person in their family, had to watch that and had to go on 42 years without her brother. And finally, they get the person who's responsible of killing her brother um, six months in prison because he was an old man. But what was this um, empathy or sympathy for Jimmy Lee? Jimmy Lee was only 26 years old when this happened. Like he was robbed. Like he didn't get an opportunity to see his daughter grow up. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the thing that people fail to realize about us is that, you know, they don't care about who love us because they hate us. They don't care about us having family. They don't care about us having friends. They don't care about us having people that care about us, you know? If anything, oh, you're black, so you must die. 
he didn't even do anything. All he was doing was defending his mother and his grandfather from being bludgeoned to death by billy clubs. And he gets gunned down for that. And then the saddest part is that during them days, you know, they didn't keep you segregated in life, but they also kept you segregated through death. So even people like at his funeral, like his pallbearers, they had to march his, his casket four miles to the Negro section of the cemetery so they can bury him. And to me, I feel like that's sick. That not only that you segregated in life, but you segregated in death too. And that hurts. You know what I'm saying? It hurts to know that you're not even good enough when you die. You know what I'm saying? But that was the laws back then. And not only that they would kill you, but they would name like a street after you or they would name a plaque or or give you like a um what's those called um a landmark a city landmark or where you died or when you um try to protest because he got um a city landmark in downtown marion you know so <coughs> excuse me so it's just um, really unfortunate because the cop that killed them apologized for doing it, saying that it was self-defense. And then once they found out that the evidence didn't match or ballistic test didn't match, then he um, tries to tell us the truth. But there's no apology that can fix after you murder someone in cold blood there's no apology that can fix that and then you get six months in prison for that then he dies you know it's just really upsetting that this young man all he wanted to do was get people registered to vote in his county because only one percent was only registered to vote and his grandfather, who was 82 years old at the time, he voted for the first time when he was 84 years old. So it just makes you mad and makes you angry that, you know, we're citizens of this country and we go through the most bullshit. We go through the most troubling things because of the fact that we have to, um, I guess, be on our best behavior. We always got to be on our P's and Q's. We can't speak our minds. You know, we can't say that we are being oppressed. And everybody just think this George Floyd stuff, this stuff been going on for a long time, forever. And... It's just unfair. And people just love to just make it seem like we complaining all the time or we just make this stuff up about police and police be the worst terrorists. You know, they terrorize us. Not all police, but you got some police that come and do their job and treat us with respect and love us and and really try to protect and serve, but you got the ones who are assassinating us. And then they don't ha hold no accountability amongst themselves. Like, what about me? Like, only get one life. Like, if you take me out, what I'm supposed to do, you know? And then you're going to expect my family to forgive you for taking my life. Like, I can't be replaced. I'm irreplaceable. Like, I have a mother, I have a father, I have a sister, you know, I got a family that love me. And then you expect me to rest in peace after you murder me. 
because I'm black, you know, that's not fair. It's not fair. And you got, you know, just those people who just was raised being racist towards us and hate, hate us for no reason. You know, it's just bad programming. You know, we must re reprogram ourselves and, and actually, you know, before you criticize, before you hate, you know, we just being um cautious. It's hard being a, a black man. It's it's really it's like, you know, you, you can't win from losing nowadays. Not only that you gotta worry about the police, you gotta worry about your own women, you gotta worry about your kids, you gotta worry about <laughs> Your own friends, your family, everybody. It's a win-lose situation. Because you don't know who to trust nowadays. But it's just unfortunate that this man, life was cut short at 26 years old. That's young. I would say that's still a kid. If you ain't past the age of 30, you still a kid. And just was robbed of life and potential. And his gravesite, his gravesite is shot up with bullets. Because people like to come for some reason and shoot up our graves because they haters. You know what I'm saying? What happened to not disrespecting the dead? You don't disrespect the dead like that. Like, he already dead. Like, you know, what more do you want? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they call us um, savages. They call us cowards. But you shooting up our graves when we dead. We can't touch you. You cowards. But yeah, it just really bothers me knowing uh, knowing that his life got taken like that and then he's not really mentioned like that. You know, he's one of the reasons why there was a march from Selma to out to Montgomery. He was the reason his death played a and they don't mention him like that in history books. And they need to um, mention him because he was a human being. He was a person. And I'm going to like have like a mini parts or mini series to Selma because a lot of stuff happened in Selma too. You know, he was murdered. Three days before Malcolm X was. So that was a crazy week. That occurred. So. I'm going to. Um, wrap this up. And then I'm going to do. Follow the Louiso. As well. And. Many others. Because there was a lot of people that. Uh, met the demise. But yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody who support me and thank everybody who been tuning in and stuff like that. Um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, The 1804 Show Chapter 2. And if you want to donate to the Cash App, it's dollar sign, The 1804 Show Chapter 2. And... I'm out. Peace.